Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Islam Explained. We have here today our uh, Dr. Zulaya Keskin uh, from Isra and Charles Street University. Welcome, Dr. Zulaya. Thank you. Good to be here. No worries. <laughs> um, now, the question uh, that I want to ask you is about uh, a person's ego, nafs, and the different levels associated with that, and how a person's worldview uh, may change by attaining different levels mm. of nafs. I mean, would that be a a question that you'd like to answer for us today? Yeah, I would because I think it affects us individuals in our everyday life depending on where our, where we are with our spiritual state which is very connected with the nafs, the ego it, the, let's call it, probably the best translation of the word nafs to English is ego um, and so in the Islamic tradition um, there is talk of different levels of the ego uh, although there are three mentioned in the Quran within the discipline of, I guess, Tasawwuf, Islamic spirituality, particularly seven have been identified. But when we look at the one, what we call the lowest, the uh, Nafsul Ammara, which is really the, uh, the demanding ego, um, it's a state where it's seen as the, your whims and desires are basically demanding of you. So basically, they, uh, one's whims and desires have a, a controlling your life. Um, and it's an interesting state because, you know, according to Islam, uh, I guess accepting God as your Lord is an important part of it. Mm. But at that level, your everything else in a way becomes your Lord. Everything else becomes your uh, prime focus, becomes your center of pleasure, center of uh, life, really. Mm. Um, and it could be, you know, something, you know, as simple as food or fame or physical appearance these if a person is very absorbed at these in these at an extreme level um, they basically determine a person's decisions in life they become the the cause or they become the purpose of one's life so this is the lowest level this is the lowest and this is level. what their center of um, object would be basically. in their life okay. exactly okay. and sure. and so and this is interesting because a lot of people who are against religion would say well i don't want to follow religion because i want to do what i want but uh, it's actually not like that at all because if you're not making God as your center of your life, you're making other things, your, um, the things that give you direction, um, that make you, help you make your decisions or determine your decisions. And that's why, again, it's that demanding ego. Those things demand of you and mm -hmm. take you in the direction that they want. So um, that could be like money or fame. Exactly. So that could be their decision making. That's um, right. Center points. Yeah. Okay. So th it's very impulsive. You're following the whims and desires and the impulses of your ego, and so the level of there's no self control, um, and it's often connected. Or the analogy that's used is like salty water. So at this level, the things you desire, the more you have, the more you want of it. And salty water is like that. The more you drink, the more thirsty you get. So that analogy is often used. So that's the lowest level. And then the next level, um, Nafsul Lawama, which is a self-accusing self. Uh, it sounds, you know, not so positive, accusing self, but it is better level in the sense there's a level of God consciousness, there's a level of understanding what one's responsibilities are. But because the person is going through this spiritual growth, they're unable to, at that point, um, master themselves. You know, so they're still making mistakes. They know that they shouldn't be doing something, but they do it, so they lapse into it. But then they repent. So that, that, that's the name, the self-accusing. It's like it, it often reminds me of a child trying to walk, learning to walk. Mm -hmm. When they first, they fall a lot, then they get up. And so they haven't mastered that walking. So at this level, it's like a person hasn't mastered being a servant of God yet, but they've got that desire to do, to do so. So it's, um, you see a level of moving up, but it's, it, obviously it still has its challenges. So I'd say at least we should be at that level rather than the, um, the first level. Exactly. exactly, because from an Islamic perspective, at least at this level, you know who your Lord is, you know yeah. who your Rabb is, um, and you're trying at least to fulfill your responsibilities towards Him. Whereas at the lowest level, you're, you, you're worshipping almost everything else but God, so yeah. it's a very um, sort of destructive place to be spiritually. And then there's the third level, which is the Nafsul uh, Mutmainna, and that's the, I guess, the restful self. Um, and this is where, I guess, purification of the ego and nafs is very strongly associated with peace or contentment. Because at this level, the argument is you are at peace, uh, you are content. Um, and the big part of that contentment is because you are connected with God. Um, you have that strong relationship with God, and everything else 
is in relation to that that relationship with God. Uh, and when everything gets put in place like that, uh, it creates a, genera- uh, a, a sense of peace um, and a, an awareness for what everything else is there for, what their real purpose is. Um, and everything really there is then seen as being a purpose to bring you closer to God. Uh, and so there's this sense of contentment. Okay, thank you. So I'd like to thank you for explaining the, the different levels of nefs. I think we just explained three of them. Um, hopefully we'll have you back again to explain other levels or maybe another topic uh, in future time. Um, thank you for joining in to Islam Explained and we'll see you next time. Thank you.